In this video, we'll speak about uh, transaction monitoring. Uh, we'll, we'll cover uh, what exactly is transaction monitoring, uh, what, what are the different questions uh, around transaction monitoring, uh, what are the key red flags uh, which we may consider, and a few transaction monitoring rule which uh, are configured in the transaction monitoring system and then understanding the whole process of transaction monitoring so let's let's begin uh, what is transaction monitoring a process of reviewing customer transactions and matching them against customer risk profile an unusual transaction pattern subsequently performing a, a focus examination of transaction and identification of suspicious transactions transaction may include transfers deposits and withdrawals and let also understand what is the objective of performing a transaction monitoring uh, this will protect bank from any transaction that may lead to money laundering and terrorist financing. It also protect bank from regulatory fines and penalty for not identifying such transactions. So we have seen in the past, uh, uh, in, in case of BNP Paribas, it got penalized for close to uh, $9 billion for not identifying the sanction or suspicious activities so now let's also understand uh, when we talk about transaction monitoring there are a few questions which comes to our mind uh, the first one may be a use of technology in monitoring of transaction sometimes we feel should we use a technology or should we use uh, a manual process of identifying uh, uh, transactions, unusual transactions. Uh, should all transactions be monitored or uh, or it's only few transactions? Should all transactions be monitored with same approach? What level should transaction be monitored? Uh, most transaction monitoring scenarios uh, focus solely on the, act or on the activity of client and not incorporating any the risk element of bank's KYC program and uh, other client specific elements such as uh, product risk, geographical, geographical risk, etc. And that's the reason uh, the system for monitoring and uh, reporting suspicious activity should be risk based and should be determined by factors such as bank size. The nature of the, its business, its location, frequency, and size of transaction, and the type and geographical location of its customer. So the whole transaction monitoring or the, or the approach uh, can't fit for uh, for for every other bank. So that's why uh, it it will vary from bank to bank, the nature of business, the risk they possess, the kind of customers, even the geographical locations. And then when establishing uh, a compliance program, one of the most important uh, step is establishing the initial set of rules. Over time, uh, the, this rule set will grow as new schemes are detected and corresponding rules are created. Money laundering schemes are uh, difficult to detect. Uh, the goal of compliance team at fintechs, banks, platforms, and payment processor is to find these abnormal patterns from the transaction data generated every day. This creates a critical balance balancing act uh, when a rule must catch all of the bad activity without being so broad and generate overwhelming uh, false positive creating rules can be a real challenge as every business situation has a different risk factor and appropriate thresholds however there are some basic rule structure 
that every compliance team should consider deploying to cover the most common schemes. So let's understand uh, uh, some some rules. So these are indicative uh, uh, which I have picked, but there can be others depending on uh, uh, bank risk appetite and and the geography and and the threshold. Let's understand these rules in detail. The first one is consolidation of transaction close to threshold. Uh, by using this rule, uh, we can detect an excessive proportion of transaction to avoid uh, reporting or uh, submitting uh, or depositing money just below the threshold. So for example, uh, there may be a threshold of $10,000 and we are here we are looking for a pattern where transactions for the party largely fall between 9000 to ten thousand dollars and and, and it, it includes detecting multiple cash deposit cash withdrawals by customer or account branches uh, or account across branches right uh, then the next rule uh, would be high volumes of transaction in this rule this rule identifies parties with abnormally high payout transaction volume inconsistent with normal and expected activity of, of the customer. A change in customer profile before a large transaction. Uh, this rule identify a situation where customer makes a makes a profile change to personally identifiable information shortly before making a large transaction. So for example, uh, the directors or uh, key controller have, have changed and, uh, and post that profile change, you may be looking at uh, uh, a different or maybe altogether uh, large transactions happening in the account. So this may indicate account takeover or, uh, or a money laundering uh, activities. Uh, uh, using the company as, as a front. Uh, overall increase in transaction volume. Uh, this rule identify a significant increase in the value of parties outgoing transaction when compared to their recent average. Uh, it look for parties with recent activity where uh, party transaction value is substantially higher than uh, uh, in, in let's say the seven day moving average yeah uh, payment made with some same IP address this rule identify transfers between parties with same address and when uh, when, when transfers are, are uh, happening uh, using the same ID IP address so that uh, would raise a suspicion uh, maybe this is because uh, uh, customer is is the uh, is is selling and buying uh, using two different front company and uh, making uh, uh, or maybe involved in uh, money laundering activity or any any other fraud altogether. Uh, frequency of withdrawal and deposit. Uh, this rule identify parties where total value of credit is similar to the total value of debit over short time frame it detects activity when there is a movement of fund uh, so there may be a scenario where uh, as soon as uh, money is deposited it's being a withdrawal and uh, this may be lead to some money laundering or or, or similar similar uh, predicate offenses which we can think of suspicions suspicious spend behavior this rule identify transaction that uh, highly deviate from party's standard spend behavior. Uh, Sometimes uh, this may indicate an account takeover or uh, externally influenced transaction. So it can be fraud. It can be and it, it can be any 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 other uh, illegal activity. A uh, lower low buyer diversity. This rule is best suited 
uh, for a platform where you generally see many buyers interacting with single seller if payments are being received from uh, geography which is not usual that would raise an alarm because uh, uh, that is going against my normal uh, business uh, uh, business transactions right suddenly i'm receiving uh, payments from um, uh, third parties or unknown third parties from uh, other countries uh, it may be high risk countries or it can be a medium or low risk countries then high transactions count from uh, new user uh, it identify a merchant with high percentage of their activity coming from new comes uh, a potential red flag for money laundering and uh, conventional fraud so these are a uh, few of the sample rules uh, which may be configured in uh, in in the transaction monitoring system and help us identify uh, money laundering and transaction monitoring uh, uh, money laundering and and terrorist financing activities so let's understand uh, some of uh, the key red flags a customer who is public official opens account in the name of a family member who begins making large deposit not not consistent with the known source of legitimate family income so this can be one of the red flag transactions that involve depositing large amount of cash inconsistent with the normal and expected activity of the customer customer who is a student uncharacteristically transfers or exchanges large sums of money account show high velocity in this in the movement of fund but maintain low beginning and ending daily balances transactions involve offshore institution whose names resemble those of a well known legitimate financial institution transaction involve offshore countries or tax haven countries like british virgin island bahama islands and cook islands etc so these are few indicative uh, key red flag and i know there are a lot of key red flag and i i may be covering uh, another uh, video just just on on key red flags uh, right so let's let's move on to the next slide uh now now also now moving on to transaction monitoring process uh, so mainly you would see a uh, four major uh, section of of uh, transaction monitoring process where uh, 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 alert is identify a transaction and suspicious transactions are identified and that is converted into transaction monitoring alert and it's it's shared with the transaction monitoring team or a financial compliance team who would further perform uh, investigation where they would uh, collate information uh, they would research on customer transaction and related parties uh, preparing the written report supporting conclusion and they also need to obtain full understanding of factors such as uh, the source of the alert the customer transaction records a uh, cdd information such as uh, how long the account has been open who opened it and who is uh, the authorized to conduct activity customer business practices customer counterparties and source of wealth uh, for beneficial owner structure for legal entities and as a, as a transaction monitoring uh, investigator uh, i i need to ask a lot of questions uh, while performing these investigations so let's say have i seen something like this before if so what was the outcome and why are the transactions high risk in terms of person amount frequency geography product etc are there pattern of activity that are troublesome what are the deviation from expected behavior do they make sense 
for this customer how how does the customer activity compare to similar groups of customer have any of the account and customer involved been alerted before are currently being investigated or have been reported to external authority right and also uh, as a investigator i also need to have access to bank systems documents uh, and other information including transactional information public data uh, like uh, subscription subscription based databases or trusted website uh, the case management system uh, to see if this specific customer has uh, had a previous alert the outcome of those alerts and whether the current alert is related in any way uh, the relevant relationship managers unstructured data such as uh, financial statement pictures audio and uh, video recording right so let's let's move on to step by step uh, uh, process uh the first step uh, in in the transaction monitoring system uh, is is when suspicious transaction alert is generated uh the trigger event is what brings the investigation before the eyes of of the investigator and it will contain information as to why the matter is considered unusual so for example uh, uh, more than two wire transfer in a in a 30 day period totaling over uh, $9000 or multiple cash deposit below the reporting threshold of $10000 in multiple branches within a short time frame right uh then what we do is we consolidate the customer profile information uh, just to understand uh, uh who they are their risk status what they do the nature of risk associated to their occupation profession and uh, business how they derive their income and wealth what product they hold and why geographic footprint and operating environment uh, relevant ad- adverse information associated with customer or their business close associates or family non adverse information that supports uh, our understanding of of the customer then we search uh, previous transaction alert or sar against uh, the customer to understand the basic activity of of that customer uh, if if any and this will also uh, clear our uh, understanding to to understand uh, the previous alert whether it's related to current alert or not right uh, then we perform a transaction review and analyze usual transaction pattern under this under this step a holistic and high level view of the activity for the relevant review period is undertaken to determine whether the activity in the account appears to be in line with your understanding of the customer their business and or occupation uh and then one transaction review is done then it's time to perform a detailed investigation on alerted transaction and uh, identify source and uh, the in this the activity in all the account under review uh, that clearly is commensurate uh, with what would be expected by customer is is neither consider unusual or suspicious so for example the normal activity might uh, include grocery purchase uh, rent per rent or mortgage payment utility and personal spending uh, with in line with customer income payroll and and wealth so here during the investigation what we do is we we try to identify normal activity and uh, and then we we focus primarily on uh, unusual uh, transactions uh, which can help in in identifying the uh, 
the suspicious activity and and come to a conclusion right so an an activity uh, so any 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 activity remaining uh, which we are saying which is not a uh, usual uh, uh, business transaction uh, <clears throat> now becomes the focus of uh, of your of your eml counter terrorist financing investigation and also include being uh, being alert to potential put uh, to potential uh, transaction monitoring report or a suspicious activity report submission the <coughs> the an assessment of uh, suspicion should be uh, based on a reasonable evaluation of relevant factors including the knowledge of customer business financial history background and behavior uh, remember that behavior is suspicious not 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 the people right and once we are done once we understand the transactions once we understand uh, the customer background financial history and then behavior this is where we take a decision whether uh, the transaction is usual transaction or it's unusual transaction which lead to suspicious activity right and and uh, there, there may be a chance where uh, as a investigator i may not able to conclude this is where uh, i need to reach out to my compliance officer uh, to get his guidance and uh, and also if there are few exceptions uh, where uh, it may be considered as a suspicious transaction or it may not be considered as suspicious transactions so that's how you uh, conclude uh, the transaction monitoring process and 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 that's uh, and the pre- my presentation on uh, transaction monitoring i hope uh, you like uh, and understand the concept thank you for your time uh, you all have very nice day